Hey guys, what's going on? It's Carl here back with another episode. And as you can see, we are talking smartwatches today. I've tested out a lot of smartwatches last year and continuing into 2018, they seem to be a trend that a lot of people are getting into. And this one is no different. I featured the first gen on my channel last year and we are taking a look at one of the best smartwatches that you can grab in 2018, the TicWatch S or E. This one in particularly, just the E. Before we get into this entire video though, a couple updates on the channel. First off, this is the last video with the A7R2, RIP. I've got two new A7R3s, which will be the main cams now. So just bear with me as I get used to the settings, things might look slightly differently, but I'm hoping not too different. Second off, the winner for the Pixelbook just went live over on Insta. Congrats to Ali Simpson. This guy is heading your way. Just like every video, I'm hooking you guys up as well. If you want to win the TicWatch E, this exact one with my sweat everything on it, just leave a comment down below what you would use this guy for. And of course, sub to the channel and I will ship this out by next week. I promise to clean it though before I send it off. Uh, let's get into today's video. So the TicWatch E, there's technically two models, the S Sport and the E version, which is Express. This one is the cheaper of the two, and that's the main reason why I think this watch is so good. Not to mention they always have sales over on the TicWatch site, which means it's one of the cheapest ways to get into a smartwatch, and I think this is exactly what this watch is for or who it's designed for. It's simple in design. I just went for the all black variant. You can wear it with every single outfit, unlike some of the brighter versions that they have for the S model. It's just versatile and that's what makes it so good. And of course, it being so cheap. It's primarily made of plastic and it's got a silicone band, which means it won't crack over time. And it doesn't feel like a cheap toy watch. It obviously doesn't have the metals or premium materials that other smartwatches have. But of course, when you look at the price, I think that's a no brainer. And for me, smartwatches are all about how it performs. Of course, how it looks. And as this one is minimal, all black, everything, it works for me. And of course, being cheap. Smartwatches have to be cheap because I feel you replace them every couple years. They're not like a, like my Omega, which I've had for almost a decade and it's still kicking along. But obviously you gotta add a couple extra zeros to this guy. There's obviously a difference. So the TicWatch E and S as well are some of the first smartwatches that ship with Android Wear 2.0, which has been a very nice refresh. Apps have been updated as well as gestures. It now feels like a complete experience, something that you should be getting, especially now as we head into this brand new year. On the other side of introducing Android Wear 2.0, we lose the fabled Tickle Strip, which was one of the coolest sounding names from last year. And it was a pressure sensitive strip on the side, which you could scroll through the menu system. Now everything is interfaced into the watch and it is fully touch sensitive. And going through everything, even when you're multitasking, running a couple apps, thanks to the MediaTek processors, everything hums along perfectly fine. It's smooth and fluid, exactly how I think an experience on a smartwatch should be, unlike many watches that I looked at last year. It's got a 1.4 inch OLED display, which means it has an always on function, something that is super useful. And that's something that an Apple watch, which is four, five, six hundred dollars still can't do. And I think it's one of the primary reasons why I have a watch on. It's to tell the time. Nice. Despite it being only 160 bucks, it still doesn't skimp out on the heart rate monitor or GPS. So all people that want to use this guy for working out, you can use it without any problems. Not to mention it's also IP67 certified. That's both for the S and the E. So no matter how much you sweat, this guy still kicks on like it's day one. And TicWatch has passed on cellular connectivity. That's both to reduce cost as well as conserve battery life. It does have four gigs onboard storage though. So if you want to download songs to this guy, so you don't have to bring your corresponding phone, I've got mine paired to my Pixel 2 XL. It's always nice to know I can leave this guy at home, still listen to music, and it's nice to be disconnected and not get text message notifications all the time. I think that's actually a bit of a plus. 
And probably the last thing that you're wondering is the battery life. And the one thing that I'll knock about the Tick Watch, and that goes for most smartwatches in general, is the proprietary charger. If you lose this guy, it's game over. Just to be on the safe side, I would probably charge mine every single night, but if you're a light user, only check the time, maybe a couple messages from time to time. You should be able to squeeze around two days of usage, just be sure to have the charger with you if you wanna to top it up throughout the day. And that's kind of been it for my best smartwatch and go-to device of 2018. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Links, of course, are down below. And remember, this is one of the best options to go for if you're just getting into the smartwatch game. I'll catch the rest of you guys in one of my next episodes or vlogs. And remember, this guy is being sent off to one of you. Details down below as well. Good luck and peace.